an Indian spiritual leader is restoring faith in microfinance, proving that with the right safeguards, small loans can still work miracles, bringing clean energy and other benefits to India's poor. The holy town of Dharmasthala is a place of pilgrimage for Hindus. Every day, some 20,000 people descend on the town for blessings from a holy elephant and, most importantly, from the spiritual leader, the Hegada. The uh, Dharmasthala temple uh, has a history of over 600 years, and the Hegadas are managing the temple as spiritual heads of the temple. So I have uh, two duties to perform. One duty is to preside over all the special rituals and uh, special festivals of the temple. And uh, another is social and also various other philanthropic activities. As part of his social duty, the Hegara started Sri Kshetra Dharmasthala Rural Development Project in 1982. Instead of handouts, the project enables poor people to plan and invest in their own future with loans for school fees, healthcare, and farm supplies. With millions of households in Karnataka lacking access to electricity and 85% cooking with wood fuel, renewable energy systems are also high on the list of needs. The program helps people manage their finances by gathering borrowers into self-help groups. There's currently 3.2 million US dollars on loan to these groups for energy systems. The poor people uh, want different tools for their own progress. For instance, finance is a major tool which they lack. Almost 160 million households are totally excluded from the banking sector. So if they want access to finance, they need to look for other models. And the self-help group is one of the best models that has been designed in, the, in over 20 years to provide accessibility of financial assistance to the poorest. The groups consist of between 5 and 20 members that meet once a week. Each member has to draw up a five-year plan for their household and save at least 10 rupees per week. Meticulous records are kept within the group and at the project's headquarters. After 12 weeks getting into the saving habit and with business plans approved, members can apply for loans. Each loan must be authorized by the group as a whole and the group bears collective responsibility for the debt. If a person doesn't pay, then the group comes in and um, maybe cajole her, maybe convince her to pay back. And when they repay their first loans, they start realizing the potential for a bigger loan. So normally after two years, people would be looking for energy loans. As well as providing access to capital, the project advises individuals on which renewable energy systems would suit them best. Three main technologies from trusted suppliers are recommended. Biogas, making gas for cooking from organic waste. Solar, generating electricity from photovoltaic panels. And household scale hydroelectricity generators. Since many farmers here raise cows, biogas is the most popular of the three energy systems. Manure is broken down in an anaerobic digester by bacteria to produce a gas which can be used instead of wood for cooking. A rich fertilizer is produced as a byproduct. The concrete digester is an expensive investment, so good advice is crucial. I don't have much land to get firewood, and each year it used to cost me 10 to 15,000 rupees. Firewood also made a lot of smoke. You can see the walls have become very black. It's expensive and not very good, so I decided to go for biogas. Now my cooking is finished much more quickly and I can spend more time with my children and help them with their studies. I took a 12,000 rupee loan and pay back 100 rupees each week. So it is not difficult for me to repay it and after two years the loan is now almost finished. Almost 20,000 energy loans have been made since 1999. 
and there are plans to rapidly expand the program to the 1.8 million families already in savings groups. This is a model to be replicated. So in that way, I think uh, uh, this program will be a very, very practical program for the nation.